can it's find like a car mechanic, you know. They can find <laughs> niches in, right. in, you know, whether they, you know, they're interested in, like you said, computer or mm -hmm. tech or organizational. Mm -hmm. we, we need a lot of skill in organization, mm -hmm. and we've had many, many people go through the fundraising and helping with committees on fundraising. People from the community either they develop their skills along the way or they bring those skills to us. And the, the boards, how many people have right. served on our board of directors, which is the mainstay of the yeah. theater. Mm -hmm. we, I think one of the unique things about our theater, and I know there are others, but I, I'm really proud of our theater for having a real strong organizational base. Mm -hmm. We had an identified mission, bylaws that are updated depending upon the circumstances, and people who are guarding that and guiding that mm -hmm. all along the way. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, but I think for a community theater with volunteers, um, that has really been a mainstay for I us. I definitely found that when I moved away from Beaver Dam, mm -hmm. that um, if that just even the structure of the board, have, have like everybody here been on the board at some mm -hmm. time or another? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just having the structure where you're on for three years and, and then there's three at a time and it rotates like that, so it's never all new. Um, there's always people that have been around a while. And there's theater and, people, and then there's, and there's, yeah. there's, there's accountants and lawyers. And, uh, yeah. And I, yeah. Um, I think it was during the 80s where we decided we needed to have some business people right. involved. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. really it's helped because idea. as much as we thought we knew everything about the theater, <laughs> no. we needed some help. Well, and with, with maybe, it's a, maybe it's not money. a secret that not all creative mm -hmm. types are good at organizing <laughs> and keeping books. Right. I like to keep books. Don't I know. noticed in one of the green rooms that we originally called it um, theater representatives yep. and consumer right. representatives. Right. Oh, oh. Yeah. for a while there. That was a big change mm -hmm. for us. I mean, it wasn't something that just... Everybody was real happy about it first, but once they got involved and said, you know, you should be doing this and doing more marketing and you know, yeah. should have a business plan and have mm -hmm. a season, mm -hmm. we we're like, yeah, this yeah. all sounds good. Because some good theaters idea. work where there's like sort of somebody that always runs it and then it like rises and falls on their energy or something. And then just and the put on a show kind of mentality. Right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, even though, it, or like, like I said, we're not perfect, we're always trying to be they, better. They only choose shows that they can star in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like that One in of the, towns. the other part is the uh, patron membership. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. when I show our programs to people from other communities, they're like, you have all those people that have supported you all these years, and you have these categories, and you know, we have like maybe 20 people that we can count on to give us money, and that's it. I said, no, Some that's, from the very beginning. Some from the very beginning. I mean, it really always was an area community theater, because as far back as uh, Bye Bye Birdie, I know that there were people from it Columbus and Wapan yeah. and, and yeah, that sort sure. of thing. So, sure. so renaming it that just really claimed what was already existing in some ways. And back then, they didn't have any theater in Columbus right. and in or, or not as right. Now they, everybody mm -hmm. has a theater group, and I've been involved in other community theater. Mm -hmm. Barb's been involved in other mm -hmm. right now community. Plug your show. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a for posterity. <laughs> in the eighties was the era that you decided to put area in there. there no. was a the exactly. word area I came think in that the was 90s. in the 90s. 90s right. yeah. uh, the next episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was after the I was 80s gone. That we realized that we needed, people needed, when we had the building, people needed to know how much it cost without yes. being frivolous. Yeah. Remember, we, in Guys and Dolls in 85, we uh, published in our program the budget. Mm -hmm. The budget? Oh, mm -hmm. And it was $5,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people were like, wow. wow. We yeah. didn't need it that much. And, and now, now it's, it's thirty-five to forty thousand. Yeah, it's at least ten thousand just for the rights. And well, yeah. the bigger the auditorium, the higher yeah. the ticket price. Uh, yeah. the royalty. Oh, yeah. uh, this is like non sequitur, but I'm trying to remember the name of the woman that wrote the book, um, White Dresses. Mary oh, Plum. Mary. Yeah. So she was in the orchestra for Do You Remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was, I was thinking, like, should I have known her? She graduated in Beaver Dam just when I was a young adult. And then after she said she was in the orchestra, I could picture a tall, thin girl with a clarinet. Mm -hmm. So the orchestra doesn't sort of mingle with the rest of the group that much, kind of, because they come in late. And they, um, I mean, they come in, like, toward the end of the summer. And uh, 
Well, we mingled a lot during South Pacific and uh, uh, right. I'll say the funny thing happened way to the forum. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, and you, oh, yeah. Too like, much. <laughs> yes. I mean, in a way, it's almost more so now because we're, we're getting like more formal in a, in a big shot theater. The orchestra's down in a pit. But the, in, in some shows, the orchestra, well, like for working, we had a, a kind of a mini orchestra and they were pretty much on stage. Yeah. Um, and then they sometimes came, like the guitar player came over on stage, or the the pianist Lisa Weisenzell came over and played flute or something. Like so, um, when we had that tiny little church theater, the orchestra was kind of right there some of the time. So, mm -hmm. so you right. had to be part of it. I, I want Diana to talk about something that she started, came up with her idea of bows and holly. Oh, I was oh, just yeah. going to. Because I would just I thought that was a Kim, Kim and I idea at a bar one night. But anyway, it well, was a <laughs> well, I was I named it. Right. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Bows and Holly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, and then it, it was we're look. I think we're looking at one. And I was just going to ask. There you, was Tina. one program there. Yeah, yeah, Tina. Did you do you remember you and I wrote a thing called Surviving Christmas? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> no, I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> written by Diane Lutz and Tina Swain. Oh, that's yeah. Right. There would be real little it's skit, like maybe yeah. three minute yeah, skit, but writers. But but, uh, but anyway, um, we decided that we needed to have something for Christmas, and, uh -huh. and I know that the community. I, it was, you know, people would come and they, and they auditioned. Right. Mm -hmm. Originally, they auditioned, and every year it was a different um, couple. And it doesn't mean they had to be married, but I know this couple was the John host. Kraft and the MCs. They, uh, MCs. John Kraft and Dave Bowman were a couple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a duo. A duo. I think I did it twice. That was yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I did it. I did it the first couple of years, maybe. Um, yeah, and then. You when Jerry did it. Jerry as well. and I did it, and uh, Roger Jerry, and Marilyn. Jerry was an artist, and he he would just would dread it being on oh. stage. But he did. He drew for every scene. Oh, he drew pictures on stage. Yeah. Oh, cool. oh. Yeah. And then. And that's got a whole thing now. Yeah. yeah. And one time, um, I was directing a show, and the, one of the minor characters. He just had a few lines at the end of the play. It was arsenic and old lace. Um, they were ill, and it was the night of the opening, I think. And I persuaded Jerry to do it because it was just a few lines. He was so nervous, <laughs> but he was so sweet about it. Uh -huh. And then at the last minute, after he had built himself all up, the guy came through. Oh! oh. So when we did Bows and Holly. Uh -huh. I persuaded him to do that yeah. little part on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, he got full so finally, he got stage. Yeah. 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 yeah, but Bounce and Holly ran for 10 or 15 right. years. Right, and I think, good show. And, and it was a variety of things like church um, church group that had a mm -hmm. bell choir. Uh, we had little kids who danced. We yeah. had, I know, the swags. The swag one year that I directed was, uh, it, the, um, yeah, the guy that did the he was a redheaded guy, and he was oh, saying, "Oh, yeah, the red raven." Yeah, yeah, red yeah raven. he did. And he he was in this one. Blue Christmas. He was in um, Blue Christmas and Santa Bring My Baby Back to Me. Yeah. Um, but it was, but it was fun because it was, it was pretty low key as far as putting it all together, mm -hmm. and uh, I think like one rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what happened is, you know, you, more and more people wanted to be involved, and I know some people said, oh, "I can't go again," because you know, yeah. it was it it wasn't necessarily uplifting. At certain times and kind of ran its course, but it was great for a bunch of years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, it was a thing that you could every group, every act was responsible to get itself yeah. rehearsed, and the rehearsal was just like that morning. But it got so big that they had to do like three shows. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. and they were so loud because people yeah. would say this kicks off our Christmas season. Yes, right. but Tina, you and I have to find that script. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here in this new Beaver Dam Area Community Theater in the 1980s, as we've talked so much about today, the, one of the big things of the 80s was moving into right. the, the old theater. Yeah. Did, as you saw this progress, maybe you had a different role this time than you did last time, but as you saw this progress, do you see any similarities between Absolutely. 82, mm -hmm. 83, 84, what comes to mind? What, what was the same? What was Absolutely. completely money. different that you noticed? <laughs> money. Need the need for well, money. money. <laughs> you were you did a lot of stuff at the building to make it, you know, to help transform it from the church here too. Yeah, and to here, here. Oh my God. What was that to like? the theater, and and then here he he and uh, Gary Torek. Yeah, Torek. Torek. Torek and Clint Burns, who was one of our 
his wife was one of the founding members of the, of the theater. Oh my. And uh, we had uh, Bill Fleming helped a lot too. And for he, this, but you're talking about here. here. For here. Yeah. But, but for, the other but one. The other building <coughs> that we uh, had, a, had a small crew of people that worked. Um, Jim Griner did a lot of wiring and uh, because we, basically we moved in and there was nothing. There was no uh, sound system, there was no lighting. Um, we had to upgrade the electrical at the old building because uh, we had to bring power up from the basement and we even got our own transformer on the pole outside so that it's, was a big deal. Some of that we had to do over a couple of years right. as we could afford yeah, it. Yeah, so I mean, in a way that that's a parallel to right. here yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah. when they yeah. first, yeah. the first show they did here in January, the building was barely ready for occupancy mm -hmm. and if you go upstairs, yeah. you know, it's still definitely right. uh, classrooms, the roof is still, still leaking right. in a couple yeah. of places. And, uh, and the I was just apart. thinking about it because we're creating a, a a very nice makeup room. We're mm -hmm. finishing that, mm -hmm. uh, and sure. we didn't have one of the old buildings That's for right. two or three years. We right. just would all be in the basement, and we didn't have dressing rooms. Let's so say it, it's a question. I think the similarities. It's a question of financial resources, but also time and talent, mm -hmm. because we rely so much on volunteers to do it. Mm -hmm. um, that. Patrick has been huge. It kind of coincidentally in both efforts, because you guys were gone for a while. Right, yeah, we were and gone. He yeah, had yeah, time yeah. Jumped right in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me uh -huh. too. And then the, the seats at the old building, I think, uh, Roger Noel, Roger. he, he, oh, he no. told mm -hmm. me that he didn't do that until 2000. I thought it was, yeah, earlier, it was earlier than, than that. that. No, well, set the cues for that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we got padding. We got padding. So well, we carpeted them. We carpeted them, yeah. So we had a volunteer group that came in and we put foam and then carpeted them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had until we got, to, until Roger did a wonderful job getting all of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. We did seats. consider bringing those over here, but they didn't quite fit the right. design. So. That's good. Yeah. And yeah. Went, <laughs> when Annette that directed <laughs> Annie, she double cast mm -hmm. all the uh, orphans and mm -hmm. she double cast Annie, she double cast the dogs. And <laughs> we had so many people wanting yeah. to buy tickets. It was a nightmare. It was it was, and, <laughs> and so we were we glad for the few that you could get, get a few more in there. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was what a, a nightmare. And that was way before all the the head the headphones oh, yeah. that you no, could talk yeah. yeah. the no. No. stage manager and so and that would say Go up and tell the lighting person. So we would be back there. I would have to yeah. run downstairs, yeah. across the basement, up two flights of stairs, and try to have enough wind to tell the lighting guy whatever. <laughs> and then you have to go well, all the way back again. Get the headsets. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't afford really good ones. So we went out to Radio Shack that was out at the mall at that time. And we got them, and they had like a, good story. a couple of channels. And Jim Griner, who was our he was our tech guy. You know, if he needed some technology, he would be the person you'd call. So we got it, and he was sitting up there, and he said, "I'm hearing a baby monitor." <laughs> <laughs> so we kept the headset on and knocked on doors to all around the oh theater my gosh. and said, "You know, do you have a baby, a baby monitor?" To change because the you're hearing frequency. Yeah. So we. And so we ended up having to go back and, and get another set that had some different frequency, frequency. because the baby monitor kept crying, kept hearing a crying baby on the, on the headsets. Oh, God. <laughs> when you talk about people bringing different things to the, the table, you know, he brought technology. He, he would have conversations with me. I had yeah. no clue right. what he yes. was talking about. We're talking about it today. Yeah. But I was so thankful right. that you he... Just, was good at what he did Absolutely. because he could figure it out. Yeah. So you could make anything. You could figure it out. He yes. just sent a beautiful note via um, Facebook, I think, saying that he had seen the first two decades okay. and how much he loved it. And I invited him to come so he can help, you know, he can sit in Well, I'm going to see him right here because yeah. uh, well, there's so many things that he helped me with. And oh, okay. Even oh, yeah. when he moved away Brilliant. and come back for a week, mm -hmm. wow. and his mother would say, what project are you going to have Jim do? Because he's like, all excited and we'd work over Christmas vacation uh -huh. on a special project at the theater. Yeah, because yeah. there'd be tech people, lights and sound kind of things, mm -hmm. and like I didn't really speak tech. Now it's even way different. So that's a thing that's like so different. It's a great opportunity to learn tech. This is so yeah, computerized. Yeah, right. and, Right. I mean, when I started, like, so this goes back to what, late 60s, or early 70s or whatever, and, and in sound, we still were using, you know, a box about this big 
with reel to reel mm -hmm. right. and putting in a little tape to show where the next sound cue was. Push oh. the button, push the button. Yeah. And, um, Problem solving. You know, yeah. <laughs> and in some ways I'm like, well, that was kind of easier. You at least know where you were, but now it's all on the computer. And there were no microphones mm -hmm. on no. stage. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Probably no. not even. Before the 90s, that would no, have been but we another didn't need huge them. So. Didn't need them. People, People knew how to project in those um, days. Yes. In Gypsy. In Gypsy. Uh, Lisa? Winkler? Winkler, right. Yeah, and they, it just wasn't loud enough, like, let me entertain She you. had a very soft voice. Right, yeah. And I remember... Um, yeah. Sam? This is Sam Shelton. Sam, Sam Shelton. But it was Mike, Mike Helm, is that a person? I don't know. Or Helms. Yeah, he's Helms. Helms. Like yeah. He had a, he, at the radio it was like magic because he had a wireless microphone. Wow. Oh, and, he, wow. And, he, and, he, and he brought it to every performance in, in a case. <laughs> and he handed it to Sam. And so as Lisa was dancing around yes. singing, Sam was in a tuxedo. That's a microphone right. In we, had to work, we had to choreograph that in. So yeah. Sam was like this but elegant you guy. Was like... You and know, a like, nuclear bomb. Yeah, she had a, ch a chain on his wrist. <laughs> yeah. she, she was she was gypsy and and yeah. let me entertain you. It was just too breathy. And but, so, right. You were yeah. asking that was about the, first the parallels. Time. Um, I think one of the big parallels is Patrick was talking about all of the excitement of the community coming to our shows in the old building, mm -hmm. and and now the same thing happened mm -hmm. with the excitement right. here with our open house and our New Year's Eve party. And still now, people are so excited mm -hmm. about the theater, and many have not yet been in here, mm -hmm. and they're imagining it's still a gym with mm -hmm. the old stage. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a shout out. This is far from an old gym, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I had somebody gym. just recently say, um, "Well, you know, you didn't have to do a lot in the building because you already have the stage mm -hmm. and you could oh, put up <laughs> And I said, "You better come. Yeah. You know, yes. I'll, I'll be here yeah. next week." You well, know, and, and come was it the end of the nineties? That we started using the high school auditorium for summer shows. Um, it was right after Pirates of Penzance. So okay, that was yeah. the last mm -hmm. summer show. So was that in the eighties? Um, so. No, because the auditorium wasn't built no. until. Oh, that ninety two. Ninety. Ninety one. Well, I think yep. Joseph was one of the first ones up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that yeah. was in ninety five. So you did summer musicals in, oh, in the, the high school, in the old that theater, the old theater, right? Oh yeah. yeah. All oh yeah. Same, same Forty product. people uh, dancing. Right. Yeah. yeah. On stage. And oh, yeah. tell the tale, you know, mixing. Yeah. Their, yeah. Trying to balance the schedule. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, did. We did full like summer it. musicals on that that thrust. Stage. So you finally move in in 1983. Is it a sense of relief that you've got your own permanent home, or is it a sense of anxiety because now you've got this whole new set of challenges in bringing this theater up to where it needs to be? Well, oh, both. Oh, both. Oh, both. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we're so excited. So but then, such a relief, though, that we didn't have to traipse around right. because it was hard to keep your audience exactly. when they didn't know where you were. Ronnie and I were talking. We were in a play together where we first met Ronnie. This was in uh, the summer, or the spring of '82. And it was Rise the again. Rise again. Um, opening night, we had six people, mm -hmm. and just because people didn't know where we we're going to perform, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, they were used to going to Wisconsin, to and uh, yeah. we just we didn't know mm -hmm. where we we're going to put the next show on, mm -hmm. and we knew we wanted to, you know, keep going, but we never knew from time to time where we'd perform, mm -hmm. and uh, the six people were the uh, was the reviewer. And his wife and the two children and two of our really good supporters and uh, been actively involved, actively involved for many yeah. years and, and Gail and Murray Kettler. Murray Kettler yeah. was really involved back then. Gail who now sings opera, I yeah, think. And right. Murray's a veterinarian. And so we moved their tables right up to the stage yeah. because it was supposed to be a dinner theater too. Yeah. And then uh, the people that were doing the dinner theater said, you know, maybe you should rethink this dinner theater thing. You got all this yeah. food, you got six yeah. people here. Yeah. So we had to uh, make some modifications. Was I there, got you, oh, I was gonna say I got you the I did love letters once. I think oh, there were yeah. two people oh. in the audience. Oh. Oh, that was in the yeah, 80s. I remember, I remember that was, was that a stage two? You did uh, that stage did okay. Okay. Uh, I did it once with John Otter, mm -hmm. and then I did it again a couple years later, and I did one night with Dan Bell and one night with John yeah. Pratt. Okay. But that was okay. a stage two. Well, you're like Mark with all these partners. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think that's why my husband my didn't want me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I've only ever been married to Lee Schmidt in the Harry Van Frank. Well, yeah. one, of, one of the... The things that the two buildings have in common is when we were when we moved into uh, Spring Street, there were people who had been members of the congregation, yes. and they you know looking to see what 
the transformation yeah. Yeah. of their church mm -hmm. to a theater. And I think, well, here it's even magnified, I don't know, a mm -hmm. hundred yeah. times, people saying, I went to school there. Yeah. I think Dave yeah. Bowman had been a member of that congregation. Mm -hmm. I know yes. Charlie and yeah, Judy McDonald when they right. first McDonald's mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, because we've transformed two different spaces and people who were involved in it in its original I love purpose. going up on third floor yeah. and looking at the mural I painted on the <laughs> wall when my daughter yeah, went to it's it's still there. Yeah. So yeah. another yeah. thing that um, from when we lost the use of the Wisconsin theater, we felt nostalgic about that. Like yeah. there's this this esprit de corps that you build when you have to like report in at ten o'clock in order to build the stage mm -hmm. and stay there till six in the morning and then be back by eight to run the dress rehearsal. That's how we did it in the old vaudeville theater. And then so we that was a, a just a a commonality that everybody pitched in and worked together. And then when we were kind of scattered around, it just didn't seem right. Mm -hmm. So then and people feel felt a little nostalgic. I mean I, I guess I did about the church, mm -hmm. losing this church, and golly, you know, so many good memories. I mean, the 80s were like my peak season so far in community theater, though I'm still kicking. Um, but <laughs> um, There's it, one memory that I am glad we don't have to relive, and that's watching people like Bertha yes. Proctor oh, yeah. and yeah. trying to struggle oh, up those stairs. So glad you brought that up. Yes, right. or yeah. tearing them up. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I mean, so yeah. we, we you know, feel a little bit of nostalgia, but that, for me anyway, that evaporated pretty darn quickly. Yeah. See, wow, look and at this, now like, we real have those space. handicapped spaces, and rarely do you see them empty. Mm -hmm. right. No, Bear, yes, yeah. I mean, people, people with ventilators yeah. have come yeah. to see the show. Yeah. It's great. Um, this may yeah. be a question for Annette, but maybe for all of you, how did how was the the fundraising different from 1982-83? To 20, I'll 12 to 20, the amount like of money. Tens yeah. of thousands to well, millions? Minus inflation. He hired a professional fundraiser in, uh, I think it was 83, because we knew there was no way we could survive without air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Because initially we had a small unit that Murray Funeral Home gave oh, donated. us. Wow. They donated it. We had it refurbished at uh, Surefire. And uh, we it was had. for guys and dolls. And we had, a, we had a picture <laughs> in the. Uh, paper of this air conditioning unit being placed, <laughs> thinking this is going to help, because people are saying, I can't come in the summer, because <laughs> if I sit up in the balcony, if I'm, you know, oh, it's going to be so hot up there. So we said, we got to have this fundraiser. So we got together, and like I said, we hired a professional fundraiser to help us run it, and uh, we were going to have this sum of money that we thought would be solve all of our problems, $200,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thinking that if we got that, we would be you know, set, we'd remodel the whole building. And it was a major project, but lots of people got on board. Uh, we have to thank some people. We have to thank Andy Bissonette and John Ralston, who, who really pushed this fund drive and knew a lot of people and are still doing those kind of things in the community. And uh, we didn't get quite 200,000, but uh, we were able to do a lot of remodeling the building. And the main thing is we got furnace, new furnaces and complete air conditioning for the building and upgraded the lighting and did some other things and uh, so that was big but still a lot of people were involved to get those you know one dollar two dollars and I think that's a parallel too. Right, right. The, the grassroots effort. The grassroots strong. effort. Yeah again indicating how much the community supports us. Right. I was on that committee too. Um, I wasn't chair though and uh, I give a lot of credit uh, to my co-chair for this fundraising, Jim Flynn, who's oh, yes. a master. Mm -hmm. And um, but it, it, there are parallels for sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I I'm always thinking that you know this has changed our community theater. Mm -hmm. We have much greater responsibility, mm -hmm. so we need to use this building as much as possible, rent it out, get tour companies in here. But we also need to remember that our primary focus is our mission to offer true community theater. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's kind of a balance mm -hmm. of um, how we become a, almost a business, in a way, mm -hmm. and the community theater at the same time. I think it's fairly unique in mm -hmm. Wisconsin to have oh, yes. that setup. There are only a few that own their own. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it, and I think we can do it, and, but we need to always look at the future and how we can continue to develop ways to use the building. Right. Some, some have, don't have any community theater buildings of their own. Very few. Very few. Oh, yeah. Very few. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One less. we'd like to get rid of. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 right. yeah. 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 six in the entire state that actually own their own yeah. building. Wow. So there's, they totally have responsibility. Some are community wow. buildings where they share with another group. Yeah. But there's another parallel is that we bought the building, original building, um, spring with a land contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was scary. It was a very, very scary, scary decision. Time. I was on the board when we decided that. And like, oh so we God, paid, such a commitment. paid something each month. Mm -hmm. and then we had to make a balloon payment, which meant that was the principal payment in five years. Mm -hmm. And at first we were like, all right, all right. And all of a sudden three years went by and we mm -hmm. thought, oh my God, we have to pay this money off. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we got the fundraiser going. So part of that 200000 went to pay off the, mm -hmm. the mortgage, mm -hmm. the debt. Mm -hmm. And so... Parallels here, we still have some debt to pay and That's off. where we yeah. are here. We, right. we raised, uh, you know, almost 3.3 .3 million, uh, uh, but we have about 350,000 to go, 400 maybe. Compared to what, 250? Would that have been the total? 50 for the Absolutely. building and then 200 for upgrades and somewhere in there, yeah. yeah. Right. So really, uh, you just added another zero. Yeah, because yeah. we had an initial <laughs> fundraiser when we bought the building. But we, you know, we went around to people and said, you know, we really need some money just to get us mm -hmm. going. And we had to uh, put in restrooms, which seems like a strange thing, because in the other building there were two tiny mm -hmm. little restrooms mm -hmm. under the stairs going down to the basement. Mm -hmm. They're and, scary. And yeah, and <laughs> so um, we needed restrooms, and we did have uh, exit lights. We didn't have fire extinguishers. The, you know, the so there's some of that bringing it up to cold bringing stuff. Bringing up to cold, right? Which is a lot of what what happened here. Absolutely. Like right. to just at least make it kind usable. Right. It had to be up to cold. And in fact, I think for the open house, it was like maybe we had the fire marshals sitting here because we weren't quite up to code yet for that first January thing. Oh, we were thing, right just there. We just yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> there. <laughs> but it was the same thing with the other building. There were some things that yeah. we had to upgrade. One of the major problems at the other building is the railing in the balcony was too, yes. too low. Oh, yeah. And uh, here we have uh, um, South Pacific selling like hotcakes. People were so excited. And the building inspector and the fire chief came and said, you know, you're not going to be able to use the balcony. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, just, you know, close it off. And, well, we've got it all sold. You know, it was, well, we, you know what are we going to do? With it? And they said, well, we're not architects. We can't tell you what to do. So I thought, well, you know, we got to do something. I said, just give us a plan. They said, that's not our job. You have to hire an architect. So I said, what if we build a, uh, a little fence, like two feet away from the railing, so nobody can get even close to it? And they said, well, well, well that might do it. So we thought, we're going to build this, and then I thought, what if they say no? So I, I grabbed a couple people from the <laughs> cast, and we went to the old building and worked in the basement and built this thing out of you know, whatever chicken, we, wire. chicken wire, whatever we could find. It looked <laughs> terrible. Mm -hmm. And put it up, and then they came and looked at it, and they said, okay, and they signed right off. And, uh -oh. but did that, you, did that was, somebody uh, some sort of influence get involved with that? Well, we did, because this is <laughs> it's kind of an interesting story. You don't want to go back down to the low thing? Well, the tenure there? Uh, it was there for until we had the big fundraiser because Brewer Metals then built the railing that's oh, there now. So it was there four or five years. But kind of a funny story uh, for some people, but uh, I'm going to tell it anyway. We, uh, the reason that it was approved is because we had uh, the entire balcony filled with influential people from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so the building inspector and the fire chief came in, walked in, you know, and I said, well, let's just go up and take a look at it. And uh, they got up there and they walked in and they were like, so John McKinstry was there. Uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other people yeah, who were there. Andy that. Yeah. And so they didn't say a word, they just sat there. And that's why they signed up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the real story. Sometimes so, it's what you know, and sometimes it's who you know. <laughs> you know. But, but the neat thing about it is that showed how much support there was in the community. And it wasn't like they were trying to keep us from doing, they just wanted to. Yes. And speaking of the continuity of the fundraising, you mentioned John McKinstry. Mm -hmm. He has been the, the number one supporter Absolutely. financially and other ways. 
-hmm. with our first purchase, Since day right one. from, the, from right. day one, day one. In, in each step of the way, yeah, he's been our angel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, day one, like 1960, whatever. Right. 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 Hasn't he been and so their family, family, too. I mean, they, you know, the whole McKinsey yeah. family that is so yes. supportive over and the years. so many others. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And then tell us about that going, because you did you go out in the community for to fundraise for both the old theater and this mm -hmm. theater? I know you were actively involved. I in was on both committees. I can't remember exactly what my role was the first one. Um, I may have been more preparing materials and so on. I can't remember. I must I must have done some kind Fundraising, of though, and getting out in the community was an equally important part in the oh, early 80s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and like everybody Absolutely. had to, um, you know, it's not, asking people for money is not always no. like in the same skill set as singing and dancing or whatever, but, but everybody kind of got yeah. lists we and got you had to call cards. people yeah. and, mm -hmm. and ask them and make appointments and see if you could get friends of friends of friends to donate I, something. I can remember Dennis Anderson and maybe it was John Ralston sitting on, on my porch yeah. and, you know, talking about how much money we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I thought, they must think I am. Yeah, it was a young weaver, you know, yes. like, I think John Landick was on that committee. Yes, he was on yeah, that committee. Yeah, and John Landick was in South Pacific. So John Landick was, was in South Pacific. Yeah, he yeah. was yeah. in a number of shows. Right. I realized, yeah, more than I realized, as I went through the programs. Yeah. Yep. When did the old theater begin to feel like home? Like, everything had settled in, you had all the pieces in place, the chicken wire was out. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know, I thought, I mean, was okay. it right <laughs> having grown up in community theater like since I was seven it, it felt like home pretty much the first yeah. thing I mean I kind of missed the old thing but no right away it was nice to just be able to rehearse on the stage that you're going to perform yeah. on and you don't have all the parts built until maybe dress rehearsal but yeah I, I would say it pretty much felt like home right away because right it was away. so good to settle it's in. It's the people who made right. it. Yeah, yeah it really is a lot of the people. They had so much enthusiasm and, and they were just Let's do it. You know, yeah, like and you know, you're going to sell tickets and people are going to come. And finally, after uh, traipsing around, something that just occurred to me when we were talking before is the other, those years when we were gypsies of traipsing around, I think it must have been kind of hard to get directors too, in a way. I mean, that was among the things. Because if you don't know, <coughs> like, you don't even know, as being the director, you'd have to be more involved in what, where are we going to set up, what are all the logistics stuff. And having your own place, you know what the logistics are. So that yeah, makes a difference too. And now they've got stacks of people waiting to be directors. So <laughs> hopefully that'll Somewhat. continue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People I think the new theater does make others mm -hmm. think they'd like to direct here. Yeah. But I mean it helps to know it helps to know what your resources are, what you're working with in space use, I think. Because mm -hmm. there were there were some kind of slim years there when we were in the early 80s when we were traipsing around. Well, that that was a harder challenge, too. Yeah. That, um, that. Yeah, and all the traipsing around and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we look at the 80s as this milestone year, the theater uh, getting its mm -hmm. own place, uh, the establishment of stage twos, uh, teletale theater. Uh, it was also the 25th anniversary at some point during the 1980s. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the 25th anniversary. What do you guys remember? Well, we mentioned that a little earlier. The bench was the star mm -hmm. of the show in the yeah. ball. <clears throat> and we just had performers from the past shows mm -hmm. um, do bits and pieces, mm -hmm. and we connected it all together with a script. And Roger Van Heron was the MC, and the bench talked to mm -hmm. Roger Van Heron throughout the show. And the mall let us use, we had a dance afterwards. Yes. We used big the band, whole big band, band dinner. Oh, that dinner was really good. Too. Dinner also think, catered to Yeah, and we I used the I choreographed area. pieces for that. We built our own stage. Right so it was, it was like a variety, we put on a variety <laughs> show, yeah. and then there was some commemoration <clears throat> and some speeches. But it was another setup of, of yeah, the theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another way to set up something. What did it mean, though, at that point? Uh, you know, not so much the, the, oh, the, the actions that you guys did. <laughs> what, what did that mean to you guys? You guys had made it. You were here since the beginning. Uh, what did it mean to have 25 years of this, now now 50-plus, yeah. uh, under your belt? It's 55 now. 25 <laughs> seemed like monumental. Right. They did. Right. We went that long. Yeah, because there were many theaters that, like Ronnie said, yeah. that kind of have their ups and downs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so yep. some of them just, you know, they might go for a couple years before they do yeah. another Keeping show. Keeping in mind that that was pre-internet, so it was a way to, to really, like, beat the bushes and find where people were living now and, and everybody check your Christmas card lists and, 
and like invite people back that hadn't been involved for a while. So it was like sort of old home week in some ways. Mm -hmm. And um, and we used the green room notes. I'm glad that uh, Annette brought these. Yeah. Because I, I used to really be excited again. Yes. And sometimes I'd even written part of it. I still like to read it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so it was fun. Yeah. And we had people cover. from all over the country that got them and were disappointed yeah. if they didn't receive their green room Yes, notes. that's true. I, I kind of forgot. And we don't do that. So it, just, it, it certainly represented how active we right. were. As I right. read through those, mm -hmm. we were just doing stuff oh, all, yeah. all the time. All the time. Which mm -hmm kept us alive. There was a, a lady in charge, her name was Lou Stummel, and mm -hmm. she took that on and she called them uh, um, full staple and mutilate parties. Oh, yeah. And yes. then we'd get together at the theater and put on the, sometimes oh, the yeah. people's kitchen table, yeah. put on the stickers and yeah. fold them, and we had to hand fold everything. Yeah, here's one from 86, yeah. Ronnie Harper Miller, oh, that's my name then, publicity chair, and so I mean, I, like I had a one-year-old then. So she, or she would have been six months old then. So it was that was one of the kind of jobs that, you know, we talked about being able to do this stuff in all phases of life. Like, so this was a job you could do from home with your one-year-old mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, get and people involved yeah. in all kinds of ways. You know who we haven't really talked about, and I don't know if you've talked in the past sessions, the Black Beauties. Oh, we oh, have yes. a little, you I know, know they came up more and when we it was went the 90s. high school. Yeah, right. that, that right. evolved in the yeah. 90s, yeah. But, uh, uh, the but next that, episode, right? Yeah, right. yeah. 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 But, but proud of people. That yeah. 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 Is that, I mean, like, again, that's the kind of well, thing, like, there's, a, there's room for everybody. There's people who, like, that, that move the props, sometimes in a dark uh, blackout between scenes, sometimes it's kind of on stage, but the, the black news would have been, like, the people dressed all in black, scurry out on stage, move something. I remember having rehearsals just to move the props for right. Cactus oh, Club yeah. so that we could get it done quickly. Because the last thing you want to do is get people like losing their attention because you have a five minute set change. So, sure. so um, uh, yeah, and getting back to the celebration, celebration of 25 years, um, I think what's reflective too of the strength of our theater is we always want new volunteers. They're a really important part of our theater, but you'll also see a thread of the same people who have stuck with us for many, many years mm -hmm. and given us the stability mm -hmm. and to pass on information and education to others. Yeah. I think that's well, a really... Yeah, like a I mean, I can yeah. <laughs> the longest thread no, of all. I, I Arr. Arr. No, but even... You know, to look back on programs mm -hmm. 55 years ago, you still right. see names that are here today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of those people still come to the shows. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now they're, they're coming or to the shows and we find kids. Or their kids. Or their kids, right? <laughs> or their yeah, grandkids. their kids, their grandkids. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, well, some people have been in the same role twice. Like you said, Gene Benneke was mm -hmm. in the same role twice. Like, Jim McMillan's been in the same show, not necessarily the same role a couple oh, of times. Give an example with, of someone who's been with us for a mm -hmm. long time. Yeah, yeah. Rodney Binder right. did the same role in Annie the mm -hmm. first time they did it, and then this last summer. And they were both sold out shows. So yes, runs, yeah. I should mm -hmm. say, right? When, it's not a very uh, popular. Oh, it was. Well, what do you remember from Annie? You were the director of Annie. I uh, know, and that was the director, and I was the producer. producer. And she put me through my paces, I'll tell you. She, her, her mind never stops creating. You know, she'd call me, no, I, what do you think? I think we should do this. Let's, let, let's try that. Okay, and as producer, that was my job. And, um, you know, find somebody to build me a laundry car. So I would have to build a laundry car and find somebody to build a laundry car. But I, I, I did that. We're getting a signal. And she had to also, I'm sure, was instrumental in managing the dogs backstage. Oh, oh my the God. kids? She got a tea. Kids. My battery's going to die. Oh. Oh. So, real quick, could we have time maybe for everybody to, what do you got there? You've got a picture. To oh, show this, is, this was just, you know, she said, bring the cops. Remember, working is a blessing was one of the lines in the show working, oh. um, which I just, to me that show is like a peak experience and it was in 1984, the spring of 84, and it was like a peak experience of my life because it was the first show, I, first total musical I directed, and Judy Bell stitched this, Judy Bell Hine mm -hmm. it is now, so it was my gift from the cast, but that was a line that the teacher character did it. They did the show again later, but yeah, so that's, that was just a line from that. Quick final words maybe while we got the batteries. Okay. One minute, she said. Community theater is family. 
and it mm -hmm. stays with you, and as your family goes through it, your kids remember it when they were on stage or or being put to bed in an mm -hmm. aisle <laughs> while you rehearse. Mm -hmm. But anybody, brilliant. please come down and join us. There's wonderful, yes. creative right. people, and you will be guaranteed to have fun and yes. make many precious memories for yourself. I yes. think this is one of the biggest opportunities to oh. really be creative and uh, contribute to the Life community. Lifelong friends. Right. I've met some of my best friends with community theater over the years. And this theater has regenerated, if that's possible, our spirit. So we're stronger than ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Was, it, it sort of fits in with what everyone has said, and that is one of the cool things about this art form is that it's collaborative. Okay. You're not sitting alone creating art. You're, you are creating your form of art. Somebody else brings in theirs, and as I said, it's, it's a collaboration that, and you're creating something that never existed before and never will again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's on there. Diane Lutz, Pat Lutz, Barb Bachroth. Rodney Harper, Tina Swain, Annette Camps, and Craig Warmbold. That's the 1980s at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. That's, that's the longest <laughs> one we've done.